the senior special assistant to Mr. President, the I'm here to brief the State House media on, an, on issues which I tagged it to be winning the fight against insecurity, status of internal security, and update on police reforms in Nigeria. I will quickly go through uh, my presentation, and uh, it will also be backed by some slides. Uh, and therefore, the presentation will be just a PowerPoint presentation and a brief version of the entire thing. Uh, starting with the background, upon inception of office, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Mohamed Buhari, identified three key policing thrusts of his administration. Security is one of these three focus areas of the current administration, and it goes without gain saying that significant and silent inputs have been made into the security sector with corresponding significant and positive impacts. The President, understanding the paramount role of the police in internal security management, has approved the police reform agenda, which is being vigorously pursued to cement the role of the police as the lead agency in the internal security sector. The general security situation. The security situation in the country has been reasonably stable in spite of the activities of unpatriotic elements and non-state actors which in, who engage in various criminal activities around the country. However, the Nigeria police is actively collating intelligence and effectively subduing elements responsible for security threats within the country. These alongside tactical and strategic deployments of operatives, particularly in light of recent threat alarms, has helped to proactively police the 36 states and the FCT and reduce the occurrence of crime to a bare minimum. Permit me to state without mentioning words that despite false security alerts and the adversaries from some quarters, there is no imminent threat in the FCT and other parts of the country based on the reports we received from intelligence quarters within our operation and from the intelligence agencies. The police is effectively achieving its mandate to protect lives and property of all individuals within Nigeria, and has deployed operational intelligence and ICT-based apparatuses to tackle and stem the tide of crimes and criminality. This is particularly to aid quick reportage of suspicious persons and incidents and other emergencies for police prompt response. The MPF Rescue Me mobile application for emergency response at the top of the button is there. This app is available on both Android and iOS. The Force Intelligence Bureau and its tactical teams gather, process, and act on intelligence to nip incidences in the boat and the curb and de de disseminate criminal elements across the country with remarkable achievements. the MPA proactive responses. The Nigerian Police Crime and the Incident Database Center to handle the registration of available items, thereby making it easier to find them if they get lost. It equally provides a platform to confirm an item's ownership before purchasing them. The Interpol Cyber Crime Reportage Platform in N in INCB, npf.gov.nigeria is available 247 for the reportage of cybercrime-related complaints. This includes all offenses provided for by the Cybercrime Act of 2015, including the production and distribution of child pornography. MPF Proactive Major still continues. With the, MP, the, the Nigeria police has engaged 
in vigorous deployment of operational assets, including an army aerial surveillance, armored personnel carriers, etc., as well as operational personnel from the PMF, that is Police Mobile Unit, the CTU, that is the Police Counterterrorism Unit, and the EOD, that is the Bomb Disposal Unit, for special operations such as Operation Restore Peace, Operation Sahara Storm, and all around operations that are also carried either in collaboration with the military or single-handedly by the police. The police air wing has similarly been mandated to conduct regular aerial surveillance patrols, particularly in areas affected by activities of violent, criminal, violent crimes or criminals. Sorry. These are some of the activities of the police tactical units that are shown on the screen. Achievements in insecurity. The above deployment have helped in strengthening the operational and intelligence base of the Nigeria police. It has led to the dissemination of violent criminal gangs, the blockage of arms trafficking routes, and the improved discipline within the force, which has built an invaluable level of trust with the public. Some of the achievements recorded are here under tabulated, as shown in the screen. Next slide. The MPF has also employed and achieved improved synergy with the military and other security agencies to combat crimes and criminality within the country. I hereby want to emphasize the synergy between the safety agencies, the security agencies, the Nigeria police and the military in trying to do things collectively and thereby uh, ensuring that everybody contributes what he knows best in areas of crime prevention and control, and that of safety agency reforms. Presidential police reform agenda. The president has shown an unwavering commitment to the reform of the Nigeria police force to attain its mandate through a reform, re-equipment, reorientation, and modernization of the Nigeria police force. Mr. President has ensured a well thought out, highly coordinated and sustainable police reform initiative by approving a five year round map for the police reform initiative in March 2022. The multi-sectoral presidential reform, the multi-sectoral presidential police reform team has been established in the office of the Chief of Staff to Mr. President. The team was inaugurated on the 26th of October 2022. All members of the high table, maybe except Mr. Gerbashow, are members of our committee. The impact of reforms or the impact of the reform agenda. The Presidential Committee on Police Reforms has effectively laid the foundation for a reformed Nigeria police force. Building blocks for a fully reformed police is already being laid and it is, and this is evident in the current outlook of the Nigeria Police Force. In a short space of time, the Nigeria Police Force has been greatly improved upon in all areas and this will form the cock of the next few slides. Legislation, starting with legislation. The present Police reform agenda has been of great benefit to the Nigeria Police Force, as three very vital bills have been received, have received presidential assent since the commencement of the reform train. These are the Nigeria Police Trust Fund Establishment Act 2029, sorry, 2019, then the Police Act 2020, and the Nigeria Police Academy Establishment Act 2022. Manpower Development Policy. The MPF has embarked on a deliberate policy to ensure maximal deployment, development of the force manpower. This is evidenced by the recruitment, training, and passing out of, and passing out of effective manpower at both Constable Kada and from the police colleges and police training institutions or police training schools and cadets from the Nigeria Police Academy in consonance with the FG's reform agenda. 
Another set of 10,000 recruits are currently undergoing training at various police colleges and police training schools across the country. The president has also graciously approved consistently, sorry, approved and consistently provided funds for the annual recruitment, feeding, and kitting of the 10,000 recruit constables. Training. In line with my mandate to ensure a continuous training and retraining of personnel, several professional development trainings have been held in the past 10 months with the support of the Nigeria Police Trust Fund, foreign agencies and governments, and the funding of other, and the funding of other courses from the lean resources of the force under my watch. These trainings include the Advanced Detective Course, which we call ADC, the Strategic Leadership and Command Course, and the Tactical Leadership and Command Course. These are and other specialized training for specialized units. Our specialized units are we have the Bomb Disposal Units, which we call the EOD. We have the Counterterrorism Unit. We have the newly created uh, from the Police Air Wing Department, the newly created uh, uh, ABA, uh, what do you call it? Sorry. Can you help me? Unmanned Aerial Vehicles. Sorry. So these are some of the specialized things, uh, units that we have, they have to undergo training. In preparation for the 2023 general elections, Training workshops have been held for all officers, including the recently concluded conference and retreat for senior police officers in Eure Imo State, which had the president and other stakeholders in attendance. And training are, all, are continuous until the successful conduct of the 2023 general election. The Police Reform Transformation Office has also organized several trainings for officers, including public relations practitioners of the force on communicating the reform agenda to the internal and external publics of the force. In partnership, and in partnership with the German government, an upgrade of the central planning and training unit in JAWS has commenced. <clears throat> Similarly, the police public relations school is set to begin training on improved human relations for officers and men in order to boost robust human relations between the public and the police and within the police family as well. <coughs> Welfare and infrastructure. The reform agenda has also helped my administration embark on massive construction of vital structures for the Nigeria police force, as well as renovation and remodeling of existing ones. These are some of the examples. A total of 119 projects have so far been completed. They include model police stations and barracks and block of plots, hospitals and medical facilities, NPF resource center in Jabi, which is under construction, the MP public relations school in Abuja, which has just been completed, and the upgrading of the Nigeria police force hangar and air at the Namdi Azukwe International Airport. Similarly, existing structures, barracks, training colleges, and schools, etc., have been remodeled in line with contemporary standards to create conducive environment of learning for trainees across board in the MPF. Issue of welfare continues. Digitalization of the MPF legal department records, which we have just completed. Successful commencement of the FG approved newly salary structure for the MPF. Tax exemption of for junior ranking policemen and the increased shift tariffs for all officers and men in the police. Insurance of uniforms, accoutrements, and kits for officers and men, as well as body armor, anti-riot, and personal protective equipment to ensure protection while on duty. Design, production, and insurance of digitalized warrant cards with unique chips for all officers and men to eliminate issues of impersonation or reduce it to its barest minimum. 
acquisition and the upgrade of paraphernalia, which I may don't want to put figures, but I want to assure you that the police has acquired all these things and it is in our custody to aid our operations. Next slide. For security reasons, I may wish to beg that these figures or data are meant for your consumption, please. Discipline. Attention has been placed on the need for professionalism and adherence to extant laws by police officers in the discharge of their lawful duties in line with the police reform agenda. This has prompted the need to look into the various complaints against police action via social media and meeting out and meeting out of sanctions on violators of law regulating the actions of police officers among our ranks. The response of the force. MPA focus on strengthening police citizen complaints mechanism to uphold discipline and prevent the resort to self-help by aggrieved citizens using the twin policy of reward and punishment. The units responsible for handling citizens' complaints are as follows. The Provost Department, the Public Complaint Response Unit, the Public Complaints Bureau, monitoring and maintaining units of the, of the police, and also our own escort, that's policing the police. These units receive complaints physically and virtually, investigate and sanction incorrigible officers, pools, and professional conducts, negate MPF policing values and they negatively impact the, the drive to smoothen partnership with citizens. Statistics of complaints received are shown here on the screen by all these different departments. For instance, the Provost Marshal registered a total of 68 complaints from January to date, and the, it was able to resolve 57 and the total number of officers awarded punishment in these are five, and, and the, the highest punishment was of dismissal was also meted, meted out on five. The IG monitoring and maintenance unit received 82 complaints. These are normally complaints that does not border on only discipline. It may, comp it may be complaints bordering on uh, bordering on issues like uh, bribery and corruption, uh, fraud-related matters, and uh, uh, complain of uh, criminal nature as it affects our serving officers, let's say assault on somebody and so forth. The complaint response unit has also, this is highest because it is normally online. Uh, these complaints are received all online. It is. It has received about 732 cases, number of complaints resolved 559, pending 144, false and unrelated 29. So this is how the complaints goes from the different sections. Let's move to, uh, let's move to the next slide. This is the last slide, and this is the highest punishment we made on our personnel for, for, for various offenses. In some instances, uh, the dismissal may also even accompany by arraignment in court if the offenses, uh, we look at the disciplinary aspect of it and then we charge the person for, to court for crime if it is criminal case. For instance, an officer or involved in a case of, let's say, extortion or in a case of arm robbery or in a case of uh, a lawful use of power, including uh, using your arms uh, in the most unpermitted way and so forth, this, this, punish, this last punishment of dismissal is meted and the person is also constantly charged to court as for his, to face his criminal case. Election and security management. The Nigeria Police Force is dedicated to ensuring the conduct of elections 
The Nigeria Police Force is dedicated to ensuring the conduct of elections are free, fair, credible, and that election security is in tandem with international best practices. This has been evidenced by the security management at the off-season gubernatorial elections in Edo, Anambara, Ikiti, and Oshun. We, the MPF recently concluded a one-month trained the trainer course on election security management for officers and men of the Nigeria Police Force to improve on what we have gathered as maybe further improvement from our off-season elections. Just last week at IMO, the top echelon of the force met for the conference and retreat for senior police officers on election security management ahead of the 2023 general elections. The conference uh, had in attendance, again, Mr. President, the Minister of Police Appears, other governors who played, uh, sorry, the governor of IMO State who played host and many other stakeholders in the election management were present were present. Community policing. The recent police-related legislations ascended to by Mr. President, as well as the adoption of community policy model as the internal security strategy of the country, have combined the change, have combined to change the policy narrative in the country in the most unprecedented manner. It has, it has said the tune for a citizen-led and community-driven policing system that is responsive and focused on bridging these skirmishes between the police and the people. A safe and secured nation. It is obvious that the task ahead of us is enormous. With the little interim and silent steps we have taken so far, undoubtedly, we shall prevail and bestow to Nigerians in, Bible, in, in available policing services. We are unrelenting. We continually put our best foot forward to ensure we get it right with regards to disseminating the security challenges in and around the country and ensuring professionalism and respect for fundamental human rights by our officers and men. Ultimately, a safe and secured nation is the goal, and we are closer to achieving it now than when we first began. In conclusion, the Nigeria Police Force under my command and leadership is dedicated to reducing incidences of crime and criminality to the barest tolerable level. With immense support from His Excellency, Mr. President, and other well-meaning top government functionaries and Nigerians. The force is similarly actively engaged in cleansing the system of officers and men who are unami sorry, unamenable to discipline in order to reduce the trust deficit between the police and the public. It is firmly believed that along this path, we have been chosen to trade a safer and sana nation can be achieved. Thank you for your listening. Okay, uh, let me start with the first question from Adesua. Realistic, the issue of violence in our politicking uh, agenda, either it be in rallies or campaigns. Well, it takes two to tango. Uh, there are laid down means and ways, procedures uh, to do rallies and campaigns. On our part, we have gone out to appeal to politicians to play the game by the rules, and at the same time allow us to regulate political processions, campaigns, and rallies to avoid clashes and so forth. 
the issue of these three things you have mentioned, uh, which was uh, the civil society organization has spoken about involvement of uh, uh, security outfits. Uh, I think I have even uh, made announcements and the pro, pro, pro announcements earlier than even their letter. Uh, on, the, on the day we, the, uh, this, on the signing day of, of the peace accord, I've also reiterated and observed that we have not less than 64 security outfits that are created by different by uh, state governors in different names uh, for different purposes. Uh, but mostly, the crime prevention and space is so wide that we are encouraging everybody to come in, and that is why we said policing is something that requires the contribution of everybody. So while these outfits have been created to checkmate crime and criminality, we have also told them that they are not to be used for politicking or to, to be used for political uh, reasons. Uh, you made mention of uh, some of the uh, particular, I think it was when you specifically mentioned, uh, Ibobagu, we have in many occasions uh, uh, checked me their high handedness by arresting and investigating those who are actually those who have actually gone out of their way uh, to commit crime and we have charged them to court. Uh, there is no way we can allow, if we can charge our personnel for high handedness and other activities, there is nobody who is uh, uh, going to be exempted. If there is any specific case that has, the police has not gone into, in the case of uh, those kind of outfits, you may mention. But for, to the best of our knowledge, you cannot avoid uh, uh, theory and practice might differ. Uh, you may tell them this is your responsibility, this is how it's supposed to be done, but still, uh, either because of primordial loyalty or because of uh, inducement or because of whatever, some people go out of their way to do the wrong thing, and if they will be charged. And that's why most of the time, if these outfits are created by governors, we are invited to educate them on the extent of their engagement in crime prevention and control. Uh, we are checkmating them. Uh, uh, they are also good. Uh, they are bad and they are ugly. Uh, they have their good side. They have uh, so that is why they are they needed to be regulated and they needed to be checkmated. And we are doing that. Uh, Rally at increased kidnapping case. Uh, in Ibadan Lagos Expressway. Yes, we, we are uh, in know of what is happening there and uh, most of the cases, if they are not prevented, they are detected. Uh, we have just, uh, beginning of this week, uh, decided to increase our presence on the road. And uh, because of a lot of construction work that is going on, uh, there are diversions, there are blockages and so forth. But our presence has been increased, and we hope that will mitigate uh, the crime further. Then the issue of uh, security personnel being attached to BIPs to be withdrawn. For every rule, there are exceptions. These are people who needed to be protected, but uh, uh, we, we, we try to do it with all sense of uh, humility that uh, BIPs needed to be protected because some people are really, if left unattended to, they can be easy targets and it can make too much noise. So we are not withdrawing personnel, or I am not with the view of completely withdrawing security aids from BIPs. Uh, but that, that we will manage what we have and, uh, and, and also uh, checkmate uh, uh, crime and criminality without actually leaving them bare. Uh, bare. Then thirdly, uh, I think Juliana talked about Chibok girls, Dabshik, the young children, the Yauri, and all that. Uh, and Yauri and all that. 
you see, the issue of kidnapping uh, is, 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 an, is, is an issue that borders almost all the security agents, all the security agents, including the military. It is a crime that once it is committed, you have to treat it very softly and with all sense of professionalism. Uh, if you do not rescue the person safe and hurt, you have almost done anything. And once somebody is uh, in the captivity of an armed person, then you need, to, you need to do a lot of things. It is not all about uh, guns and other things. There are a lot of other things that can be done. We were able to rescue uh, the whole of forestry students in Kaduna through negotiation. We were able to rescue many others, which I can give you example. Uh, for those that we are in contact with, uh, there, are, there are things that we are doing. It is a new crime and uh, new ways of approaching it and new ways of dousing it are really under study. For instance, the issue of trained negotiators and so forth are not an issue before, but now we are looking into it and we are putting our personnel to undergo such training and courses. Uh, so uh, we, we will not say hope is lost, uh, we are still on it. Uh, the issue of Chibok, boys, Chibok girls, you know, they are, they are coming out one after another and gradually. In, in some times, they come out uh, and say, yes, we have come to see our parents and we want to go back. <laughs> so uh, maybe they have been assimilated or acclimatized with what the situation and being indoctrinated and uh, had become part and parcel of... Uh, those who have abducted them and so forth. But like I, I'm saying, it is a continuous effort. And uh, even, even last month, you, you saw a Chibo girl coming out with two or three kids and uh, say she, she only come to greet her parents and she wants to go back thereafter. So we are still on it. There is hope. The last one, you mean corruption relating to police reforms. Well, uh, I think police is being closely looked at because it is the closest, maybe, and the most widespread uh, uh, organization that can be easily seen in contact with the rich, the poor, and, the, and whatever. Uh, but I think generally we are doing our best, and the society should also help us. Thank you. We'll take the second. Uh, okay. Okay, what are you doing to eliminate cases of assault on women police? We are treating it like any other case of assault on any other woman, whether it is police or not police, whether it is the assault come from a serving officer or any other person. Uh, the nature of the case will be investigated and uh, the person will be disciplined according to our own standard in terms of uh, police discipline, or if it is between police and other members of the family, the case can also be charged to court. I'm sure you are talking about the woman inspector case, maybe, which we are looking into it. And uh, for now, uh, we've not yet concluded investigation, but from the small briefing I had, it's like a case of uh, two fighting. Uh, two fighting in the sense that uh, she also attacked the man and jacked uh, him by his collar and uh, so the man also reacted. Uh, so it is a case of two fight but between two serving police officers and there are procedures of looking into it. Uh, more especially uh, between a junior officer and a senior officer and so forth. But generally the case of assault is a crime against human or against person. Unless the person forgives, if it is established that you have assaulted another person, it is a crime which for which anybody can be furnished. Umar, you said, what are we doing to engage the general public in assisting police in intelligence or giving information to the police? I think that has been an age-long complaint of members of the public. And because of this, a lot of efforts have been made that you don't even need to come with contact with the police to give information. There are a lot of means and ways of passing information through 
uh, uh, because of maybe with the aids of technology, the members, all those uh, uh, departments that I have mentioned uh, have contacts that you can report cases to. Our intelligence branch, uh, our public response uh, departments and all, they all have means of you getting across to us by passing the input, which will be, which will be tested and looked into. So, uh, and uh, our, we also have our informants that are also protected uh, and, uh, and uh, also rewarded. Uh, and uh, a lot of efforts are being made, like I told you, the public relations uh, courses that we are doing to, uh, to entrench in our officers, particularly those in the public relations department and so. Uh, bridging the gap between the trust gap has been an issue and we are embarking on it almost in all our outings. So that I think will mitigate, it has even mitigated. Uh, the fear you have expressed, uh, expressed now. Tony, you said threatening to boycott election by police officers. Well, I think uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, I have read that one like you have read in the, in the like also you have read in the social media. Uh, but uh, there is nothing like that uh, within the force uh, that, uh, but we are assuring you that uh, the grievances are genuine. Uh, we have uh, received a new package in our welfare and uh, there are areas that needed to be paid. And uh, we are talking to our officers that uh, these areas will be paid. We are making effort to get them paid. That is not your business. <laughs> Attacks on campaign, you also uh, talk about, I should, I, should, I should look at the issue of attack on campaigns. Attack on campaign is like any other crime. It can be detected, it can remain undetected. Uh, like I told you, it is an issue that everybody requires playing the game by, uh, the, game by the rules. Where we have issues, uh, we, we arrests can be made and, the, and, the, and those who are involved can be also be charged to court. Uh, you particularly mentioned, oh, I think, no, I think that was not, no, it was. Harry, you online news talk about electoral act. We know our uh, powers and the duties in the electoral act and we continue educating our personnel as to how we can effectively use those, uh, those powers to checkmate uh, and ensure that uh, the electioneering period goes and metamorphose to free and credible election. Uh, we have told you earlier, or I've told you earlier, that we are educating our officers to their roles and policing election is, 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 is not an easy thing. Uh, sometimes, what the Electoral Act is saying, how you, for instance, police the election. There is nowhere they say you can carry a gun and stick and go and regulate maybe, 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 maybe voting process. But at the same time, you have to also arm some people and give them whatever leather to, for, for them to checkmate those who are even saying the election will not even take place. So in that, in that way, you, can, you even have to divide your, your, your personnel into top components. Those who will regulate the conduct of persons who want to exercise their franchise, and those who are saying that even election is not going to take place. For instance, the case in, 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 the, in the Southeast, for instance, where, where, where IPOB and ECM people are saying that there is no election in our area. This one, they are not even saying the, the, uh, anything about elections they don't want. So you need to checkmate that. And that one, you cannot even checkmate it by asking them to go into line and be, be orderly and so forth. So you need two type of process of policing in that place. And this is what we are doing in almost uh, many places, many places. Our threat analysis, analysis or our threat assessment has given us the lead to, to see how you can police each area based on 
on, on the threat analysis you have done to ensure that the election takes place. Uh, so our responsibility as given to us by the Constitution, by given to us by the Electoral Act, we are applying them to see that we do that. But in terms of, uh, you're also saying whether uh, we can invite uh, other agencies. Yes, uh, in the election security police is the lead agency, but every other security agency can be invited uh, for, 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 for such process. But I think it is not at the, uh, at the instance of campaign and rallies. Uh, for now, campaigns and rallies uh, are being policed. And uh, once uh, we have been informed, we try to see how we can provide maximum protection. Uh, what, what, what happened in Borno had happened, and uh, the assessment uh, of the Post, uh, sorry, of the state public relations officer might not be completely uh, conclusive as he had reacted to, to, to what had happened very quickly. And I think we have a, a total team that uh, will assess what had actually happened and the extent of what had happened based on various presentation that is coming out from members of the public, from the APC, from the PDP, from the police. So you need to have uh, more, more information to, to come out with a clear picture of what had happened and also put measures to prevent such occurrence in future outings of, of, of the parties. Uh, I know somebody was talking about uh, Zampara, uh, Kaduna, and so forth. All of them have different, uh, different issues. It has even happened in Lagos. Uh, earlier than, 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 than that, earlier than now. It has also happened in Lagos, where, where the data of APC is also uh, reported to have been attacked and so forth. So I think uh, while we are doing our own, there is a lot of education, there is a lot of reorientation, there is a lot of enlightenment that is also required by members of the public from all of us here. Uh, so that is that for, which one have I not answered? Gloria and the POSAP. Uh, yeah, POSAP is, like you said, it is commercializing some aspect of the police uh, duties. It has taken that aspect. The Special Protection Unit, uh, the DIG is here, uh, was created to provide protection for VIPs. And uh, we feel uh, people are abusing it and uh, also government is uh, uh, providing a lot of services uh, very, uh, very freely and, and without, with, with no cost. And, uh, uh, and that was why a presentation was made to government uh, uh, in, con in conjunction with the, uh, with the Ministry of Police Affairs, the Ministry of Finance, and the, uh, to look at if uh, revenue generation process can also be put into use. But anybody that will be provided with that service uh, must be assessed, must be check, uh, checked and processed. That is not one of those you have mentioned before such, uh, before such protection is provided. It is a commercial outfit of the police, yes. Yeah, we check before, during, and even after providing. If you have any information that we have given any yahoo yahoo boy any protection, we will we'll, we'll need to have it so that we can withdraw. Pardon? That. The, the the portal is the last thing. Before, you, even if you, you, you don't just apply in the portal and get the police. You, you, you put in an application and say who you are, what you are, and what you, why you should even be protected. Or where you wanted your organization to be protected and so forth. So there is checks. But it may not be conclusive because of uh, a lot of things. A lot, if you, maybe you talk about database of persons in Nigeria, 
many of us here cannot be identified, even if uh, something happened today for somebody and you want to know more about him. There is no database that you can, you can, you can go into. Uh, but you can only do that by checking and also, if not because of this issue of NIMSI and other things have been provided, Nigerians don't have uh, real data. The data are coming through investigation, through asking questions, and, and, and maybe if the person has not been involved in any criminal matter and all that. Thank you. Thank you. Can we, uh, we'll, we'll take that uh, offline later on. We have about four questions online here. With your permission, uh, Acting Chair, sir. We, do, we did it with, uh, with that of the boxing kit, the lady. We all we did it in the conference with uh, media and so forth. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Then um, this other question here says, as a fallout from the just concluded senior police officers retreat in Oweri, are there stipulated punishment for officers who become partisan during the electioneering uh, process? Also in relation to that, it says, um, what is the force doing to curb partisanship among officers? Then also another question here that has to do with welfare too. What is the force doing to improve the welfare of police officers that are more importantly, and more importantly, how do we plan to alleviate the professional or elevate the professional conduct of officers on several occasions? I don't understand that. Question. Is it welfare of officers? What are you doing to improve the welfare of police officers? Basically, he didn't hear it in my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the person joined online, so most likely the person didn't hear, so you might need to reiterate. Even if I answer, he will not hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the person is watching online now. <laughs> I think I'm okay. I didn't see any question there. <laughs> start with uh, Dr. Ima, update on security situation in Abuja. Nobody has dismissed it as alarm, just an alarm. Government has never dismissed it as an alarm, but we only uh, said uh, it was blown or made in such a way that uh, our people became uh, apprehensive. Uh, to the situation or to the way it was done. Uh, the embassies uh, have their own responsibility to their citizens and uh, uh, they can make their advice. Uh, and the government has not dismissed what has happened because they have also informed us of uh, what they foresee as threats. And, uh, and uh, we, on our part, also looked at what they put as threat as something that has been with us, and uh, efforts are being made daily to to see that those threats are mitigated or or prevented from happening. And that is what has been happening in Abuja and all over the country. Uh, sometimes uh, these threats or these things happen, but uh, nobody has dismissed it as mere uh, uh, alarm. And it is because of the, uh, a lot of efforts has been made, like you said, uh, uh, to those detention. And uh, yeah, actually, arrest has been made for those who we are, we believe are planning to commit crime in whatever form. And uh, and uh, we have done that arrest, and as that uh, when due, uh, those arrested will be charged to court by any of the services that have them. Uh, no, that is not. Uh, that is not for your consumption. G <laughs> D, uh, uh, you said junior officers. Well, you see the issue of welfare uh, in any service or in any appointment that one takes. There are duties and responsibilities that that service or that OGA or that department you are serving must have laid down to you as your, as, as your entitlements. Uh, our, in policing or in police uh, duties or in police employment, uh, beside uh, 
your emolument, uh, we are talking about barracks, barrack accommodation and so forth. And uh, different policies uh, had come and gone in terms of providing uh, uh, barrack accommodation to police officers. Uh, the issue is there, or the efforts to make the barracks there being provided, and what is also there is being kept, uh, renovated, and so forth is there. But you have to work with what you have as resources, as a, as a, as a, as an, as a supervising officer. It is what is, if you have, what you have cannot uh, entirely renovate or rebuild more, uh, then you have to me take another means. The police officers are also uh, uh, government workers. They take salary, and they, there are instances where if government cannot provide them with a barrack accommodation, they are also given uh, what we call the rent subsidy, which is, which is also uh, the same in the public service. So where we couldn't provide barracks for our officers, uh, rent subsidy is provided for them. And uh, in terms of uh, other, other things like kitting, which is a light question, junior officers are entitled to be kitted every year. And uh, we are trying to do that, but sometimes uh, because of paucity of funds, uh, you may not provide what is actually the entitlement. And uh, uh, for instance, you may not ask somebody to wear a shirt and trouser, cap and shoe just for one year, one set. So I think it is also good uh, uh, officers supplement it is even by themselves without even being told. Uh, we, we try to provide, uh, on, in my coming, or on my coming, I think, we have done twice, and uh, the last set of uh, uh, kitting to be provided for those who are entitled to be kitted, I have just ordered what we have in the store to be given out. So what we do is to rationalize it now. If we cannot provide everybody at once, we give it to some uh, commands or formations, and the next set we give it to, 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 to other command and commands. And in that way, we are providing what is entitled to them. Allocation of funds to police stations and divisions. Uh, you see, the, the, the envelope budgeting is there. We send in a requirement, including what we could have given to the, to the, to the divisions and formations for, for, for as running cost. But it is not what you have budgeted or what you have requested that will be given to you. So whatever it is given to you is what we try to rationalize. And, 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 and send it out. So definitely what is given cannot, cannot uh, provide the necessary uh, impetus for, for a division not to cry that it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, let me say for instance, uh, uh, maintenance of, let's say, patrol vehicles. What is allocated cannot, cannot actually do that. Can, and cannot actually, uh, you cannot even determine what, what, what is going to be given to you. What, what has been given to you by the beginning of the year can also take you through because of changes and so forth. For instance, you, rec you have 600 patrol vehicles. This year alone, between January and uh, this, I, I, I flow in over 600 vehicles to, 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 to the police in various commands and formations. But, Look at the issue of maybe lubricant and petrol. The prices are, okay, if you have, what we are buying, we are, we were, when I came in, we were buying diesel at 8 million for a truck. Today, you are talking about buying a truck of diesel wood. Very much difference with what has been budgeted for. So certainly, your needs and requirements cannot be taken care of or our needs and requirements cannot be taken care of by what we have budgeted. We have a lot of goodwill from government, from uh, citizens, and, uh, and that is what he has been keeping. And that's why I believe, I always try to say uh, that we are grateful to government and we are grateful to government, uh, people generally. Security, is the, 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 the quantum, you cannot say it in terms of Naira and Kobo. It is not what you have put in terms of Naira and Kobo that keeps security going. I think I've answered your question. Any other one?
the uh, basic computer training. We, yeah, we have changed our curriculum, trying to introduce all these things, driving, computer training, uh, and so forth are part of our new curriculum training in the police colleges. Many of them very new, unknown to the country uh, as, as uh, they arise. We commend you for having raised the morale in the police. It was down before. Also for raising public confidence in the police, which was also down at some point. So, yeah? You do this thing so effortlessly now. Uh, <laughs>